Hi, my name is Sarah Clark and I'm a clarinet performance student at Virginia Tech. Today I'm going to teach you some tips and tricks for developing really solid and seamless legato playing on the clarinet. Now often as wind players we put a lot of focus in learning how to articulate and while that's super important, developing a strong basis of legato playing can be really essential to learning all the different types of articulation. The tips and tricks and exercises we're going to go through today can all be applied to any type of um, articulation, any type of playing, and they develop a really good solid baseline for learning and going beyond basic legato playing. So there are three things we want to remember when we're talking about legato playing. In all types of playing, but especially when we're trying to develop good legato technique, we need to focus on our fingers, our embouchure, and our wind. So the first thing we're going to focus on is our fingers, because really, regardless of how well you're doing with your air or your embouchure, your fingers are going to have a dramatic effect on um, your legato playing. So first of all, what we're trying to do is to get rid of all of the pops and little noises that can come along with playing the clarinet. So all of these, the sounds that you get that can, um, you know, really seep into your playing in a pretty bad way. So some of that is going to be your instrument and how well the repair is on it. But there are some things we can do to kind of take away from that uh, sound. So the first thing is we need to think about resistance of our fingers. So either motion that you're doing on the clarinet, either going down with the finger or lifting with the finger, you need to be trying to think about and feel that resistance going in the opposite direction. So when you're lifting a finger off the clarinet, you want to feel a little bit of resistance trying to like push your finger back down so that it's coming off really smooth and not like jerky. And in the same way, if you're putting a your finger down, you want to feel a little bit of resistance keeping it away from the clarinet so that it doesn't pop down too hard and create some kind of extraneous noise. So one exercise that we're going to do to work on this a little bit is called the finger motion and time exercise. Um, taken from Philip Polyolonga's Squeak Bake book. Basically what we're doing is we're going to start on um, a bottom of the staff F, so just the thumb down, and we're going to go down to the E and then back up on loop a couple times. And while we're doing that, we're trying to um, lift our fingers and put them back down in time. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll have our metronome on about 120 here, but we're going to start with our, with our um, hand on the F, on the bottom of the staff F. And then as we're playing, we're gonna, um, first beat is just normal. Second beat, you're gonna pulse away with this finger, pulse away from the clarinet with this finger. Third beat, put it down to play the E. Fourth beat, pulse into the E, squeeze the clarinet a little bit. And then for the next measure, we're gonna pull back up to the open F for um, a full four beats. And then we'll just keep repeating that two or three times, and then you can just move on to the next one. So an E to D and then a D to C and so on. So I'll show you what that looks like. So when you play through that exercise, you may have noticed that you were really getting a pop in the sound of your clarinet. And that's understandable for that exercise. But to get rid of that, we really need to be listening um, for that pop in all of our playing. So a great way to do this is to practice glissandos, where you're not doing anything with your mouth. You're really just trying to focus on your fingers doing all of the work. But another thing we can do is literally to take off the top of our clarinet and play through passages listening to the sound of the clicks. So you can just listen and see how much sound your clarinet is making while you're playing. You can really hear it well if you're doing it this way. And just try to focus on making that sound softer. So you can play through your exercises or any legato passages that you have with this technique to really hone in and focus on what your fingers are doing. So the second major factor in playing legato is keeping our embouchure and our tongue in the right position. Now luckily when we're not articulating, we don't have to move anything there. So there's not a whole lot you need to do except to keep it really, really consistent. To achieve good legato playing, we have to keep our tongue high and our mouth set. We're not trying to voice anything really or do a whole lot there. We're just trying to keep everything here set while we're playing so that it can't affect anything our fingers or our airstream is doing. So a great way to practice this is to get um, kind of a small mirror that you can look at close up. Um, maybe place it on a counter or a table or a stand in front of you. 
and try to watch your embouchure while you're playing a passage. So memorize a short passage, play through it, and watch the mirror to see if anything in here is moving and try to think about if anything's moving because the more consistent that we can keep our embouchure, the easier legato playing is going to be. Now the last and most important thing we have to focus on in legato playing is our airstream. If your airstream isn't flowing completely consistently and avoiding bumps, then there's nothing that your mouth or your um, fingers can do really to offset that. So we need to keep a constant stream flowing so that our instrument can do the rest to get us um, those nice legato passages. So a great way um, of practicing this is to just actually play through legato passages without any sound. So take your favorite legato passage or an exercise you're working on and play through it once as normal and then play through it again without making any sound. Um, so you're blowing the air through it, but you're not, um, you're not letting the reed vibrate. You're not making any sound and listen for your airstream. You don't want anything to dip. Um, if you're, you know, tonguing something or, um, or just going over bar lines or um, changing the rhythm a little bit, you want to make sure you're not letting your airstream dip or surge anywhere because that'll create bumps that you really can't over, um, override in any other way. So in conclusion, as long as we work on our fingers, our embouchure, and a constant wind stream, and we have a good working clarinet that's not making too many sounds on its own, we can really excel in legato playing. So work on these exercises, practice them a little bit, and see how your legato playing can improve, and then also take those techniques over into um, more articulated playing.